Hey there, serotonin seekers. Ever wondered if the happy chemical serotonin is really the key to understanding depression? Well, buckle up because today we're diving into the serotonin theory of depression. We've got our hands on a systematic umbrella review of the evidence, and it's time to spill the tea. All right, let's start with the basics. What is the serotonin theory of depression? In simple terms, it suggests that depression is caused by a lack of serotonin in the brain. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter, which is just a fancy word for a chemical that helps transmit signals in the brain. It plays a role in regulating mood, appetite, and sleep, among other things. And the serotonin theory has been around for decades and is the basis for many popular antidepressant medications like Prozac and Zoloft. But is it really the whole story? That's what researchers set out to find in this massive review published in the Journal of Molecular Psychology in 2022. They gathered evidence from over 50 years of research to see if the serotonin theory really holds any water, and the results are pretty darn interesting. Before we look at the results, you might be wondering what an umbrella review is. Great question. It's a reversible umbrella. It's kind of like a review of reviews where researchers look at a bunch of studies that have already reviewed a topic, and then they synthesize all of that information to come up with a big picture understanding. It's kind of like an all-you-can-eat buffet of scientific knowledge. Now let's dig into the findings of this paper. The researchers examined the serotonin theory of depression by looking at three types of evidence. Genetic, which studies how our genes might play a role in depression. Neuroimaging, which uses fancy pictures of the brain to see what's going on inside. And pharmacological, which focuses on how drugs affect our brain and mood. And guess what? It's complicated. The evidence isn't as straightforward as we once thought. Most studies discovered that there wasn't really any significant difference in how active serotonin was in people with depression compared to those who didn't have depression. Also, researchers attempted to lower serotonin levels in the brain with a method known as tryptophan depletion. Here's a quick explanation. Tryptophan is an essential amino acid and is like a Lego block that helps build serotonin in our brains. But even when they tried to remove some of these Lego blocks, it didn't consistently make people feel sadder or more down. To top it off, high quality studies that looked at a large number of people found that there really isn't a straightforward connection between specific genes linked to the serotonin system and depression itself. This was true even when they took into account the role that stress might play in influencing depression. In fact, the researchers found that only a small percentage of people with depression actually have a serotonin deficiency, which means that there's more to this mental health puzzle than just the happy chemical. Other neurotransmitters like dopamine and norepinephrine, as well as genetic and environmental factors, also play a role in the development of depression. Now you might be thinking, what does this all mean for the popular belief that depression is caused by a chemical imbalance like low serotonin levels. Well, it turns out that many people believe that depression is caused by a chemical imbalance in the brain, such as serotonin, and this belief has a significant impact on how we think about and deal with depression. When we believe that depression is solely due to a chemical imbalance, it can lead to a negative outlook on recovery, making it harder for people to believe that they can regulate their mood on their own. This mindset can also influence whether someone chooses to start or continue taking antidepressant medication. In some cases, this could lead to people being overly reliant on medication, possibly for their entire lives. It's important to note too that while antidepressants can be helpful for some people, possibly and probably due to their belief in the medication's effectiveness, these drugs also come with potential side effects. Common side effects include things like weight gain, nausea, sexual dysfunction, and sleep disturbances and emotional blunting. When individuals rely too too heavily on medication without considering other treatment options, they might miss out on exploring alternatives or complementary therapies that could also improve their mental health. However, as we've seen from the research we've discussed, the relationship between serotonin and depression is far more complex than just a simple chemical imbalance. In fact, this review suggests that the enormous research effort based on the whole serotonin hypothesis has not produced convincing evidence of a biochemical basis for depression. This is consistent with research on many other biological markers. The authors of this review suggest that it's time to 
acknowledge that the serotonin theory of depression is not empirically substantiated. But hey, that's what makes science so exciting. There's always more to learn and uncover. So my fellow serotonin seekers, continue exploring and remember, happiness stems from understanding ourselves and the world we live in. Well, at least as long as we're comfortable with those discoveries. But that's a topic for another video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.